I didn't spill anything. The roof here is not exactly what I would call weather sealed. So I wonder how bad it's going to actually be when I figure out what's causing that leak. You're a solid foot and a half off the ground at least. Oh yeah. Oh man, this guy. We got my new battery monitor and shunt. The battery combiner that <clears throat> this controls all the charging. And then the new lithium battery. So, whoa, <clears throat> excuse me. So I'm gonna replace this combiner unit. The combiner unit allows the alternator to charge not only these two house batteries, but the starting battery up front. So this is a specific lithium one that will allow the alternator to charge standard lead acid batteries and lithium batteries. I don't know how that voodoo works, but <clears throat> I gotta install that. So I'm gonna take out these two batteries, which weigh in at 70 pounds a piece. So I got 140 pounds of batteries. And this battery, you can see how, like, here's the box. <clears throat> and height. So it's a pretty big battery. And it's 30 pounds, it's so light. So we're gonna <clears throat> save over 100 pounds of weight. And then I guess the only way to know a difference tell a difference in my system with lithium versus the standard lead acid is well I mean I'm down to 12.1 right now the fridge is currently running and I have just one LED light on usually when I hang out in here for a couple hours and the, the fridge will be running and everything will be going usually I see that drop to 11.8 11.9 volts so we'll see now if it drops how, how the voltage drops and how the system how the system does if I even notice a difference going from standard lead acid to lithium or not we'll find out but first first is I got to get it wired in <clears throat> so since I have the combiner wired in my house battery and has power right at this wire right now so I want to kill the power I was going to disconnect the battery and then I remembered I actually have a kill switch for safety. It's harder to steal the van if the battery isn't connected. So now, see, watch, my voltmeter up front turns on, turns off. Now, <clears throat> this wire's dead. Now we're safe. Now I just got to disconnect the rest of the system. Okay, I just got those two big Berthas out. And a little dirty back here, so I'm gonna go get a vacuum and clean it up. But there's a concerning amount of rust here. You can see it all along this seam down here. <coughs> oh! Woo, mama. Okay, that was a good one. Anyways, yeah. Some no bueno rust happening up in here. What is this wire? Black and it goes to, oh good, they got power wires off this breaker that I don't know what. We gotta do some investigatory work after we get the vacuum going. Okay, so when you're cutting through battery cable, I, I know I've never had good pliers, I'm sure most people don't, so no one's ever said anything otherwise about it. How nice of a smooth perfect cut just don't cut your finger off okay. I got everything installed under here and I put a bunch of junk back under the seat already so I decided not to hook up this is a battery charger that I was using for shore power I decided not to hook it up right now because whatever I don't need it <clears throat> this isolator <clears throat> sorry wow so this 
I said this is the one that allows it to charge. This is the lithium battery. I still have a sealed lead acid starting battery. So this is the starting battery. This is the house battery. Let's see, keyed ignition power, a small ground wire, and then these are from the solar charge controller, some other miscellaneous stuff, and the shunt that allows me to measure. Now, <clears throat> I didn't obviously install the gauge properly. I'm gonna probably try to put it right there eventually, but for now I'm just gonna leave it in the bag leave it in here and the, oh look the app has been updated cool so now we should be able to see this thing <clears throat> there we go the battery's fully charged right now drawing 3.6 amps of current oh and it's trying to update oh because the fridge Look at this. Right now, because the fridge is pulling juice. Oh no, the fridge is pulling. Man, let's let that think for a while. Four days. <clears throat> there we go. What's the what's the voltmeter on the dashboard say? Twelve seven, twelve eight. This says twelve point eight seven. And then the one right here says thirteen one, and this says thirteen two five. So that's how much <clears throat> for, from measuring right off the battery to wherever this is measured from. It loses 0.15 volts up here and loses 0 0.06 volts up there. So it's been about five weeks since I filmed this last video and got the lithium installed. I learned quite a lot in the last five weeks and I still don't have it all figured out. I'm going to put up a uh, copy of this little cheat sheet I found on the internet. 13.2 volts that I showed you in the last scene. That's about 70% charged. So the monitor doesn't always start off properly. It said it was 100% charged, but I had to email the company and talk to them for a week to figure out that the state of charge monitor is very particular. I don't have it quite figured out, and I'm going to show you this wiring diagram that they sent me that I couldn't even find on their website and you look where the shunt is on the diagram and then there's a G it says G bus well ground bus means that everything that I have in the house so I have the refrigerator I have light strips and then the diesel fired heater right now all of those all the grounds for all those components need to be ran to the ground bus so that it can properly monitor so that it can figure out the state of charge and if it's not if it doesn't properly monitor then it can't properly be charged because it doesn't know how full it is it's a really smart system you gotta have you gotta cross all your t's and dot all your i's and then i'm going to show you guys a screenshot of where i got it last weekend when I was driving where it'll tell you the the current if there's a negative in front of it then that means that's what's being drawn for instance if the fridge is on or the lights are on and then when it just says if there's no symbol in front of current then that's how much is charging so this screenshot my alternator was putting in 32.9 amps at 455 watts of power that's that's pretty dang good. My solar, to compare, my solar charges about one amp if I'm lucky. I need to work on the solar. That's the de definitely the next thing I need to upgrade. But stay tuned because I got a lot more learning to do. I ordered a ground bus from the from the old Amazon, but it's it's a couple weeks out, so just wait for that to show up. Get the system rewired and. I'll continue to update you guys on how it's working.